Hey everyone, what's going on? Uh, microphone check. Microphone check. Please let me know if you can hear me, because uh, if you remember my last stream, this mic would not work. I could not get any of my mics to work except for that really crappy uh, Skype mic. So if you're watching right now, please type into the uh, chat box that yes, you can hear me. It's all I'm looking for. Anyone, can you hear me? So I'm not seeing any chats. So I'm gonna assume maybe you can't hear me. Anybody? I can't go if I can't be heard. You know what I'll do? I'll just open up my Skype or not my Skype, my um my stream on this other on this other screen. And I'll I'll see if I can hear myself. Test audio check one two three. Okay, I can hear myself, so I'm going to assume that you guys can hear me too. All right, so in the last stream, uh, I was trying to learn Blazor. Uh, you know, we we created a. Uh, Gary, hey, thanks, man. Thanks for the confirmation. Looks like I fixed my audio issues after all. Uh, but yeah, so my last stream, I figured, you know what? I've been hearing a lot about this Blazor stuff. I want to give it a try. Let's see if uh, let's see if I can learn this Blazor thing. So we installed it. We created a project. Uh, we did some very basic playing around in the uh, in the HTML and the C sharp. And so uh, during that process, I learned about hey. Uh, Blazor has dependency injection. I was like, that's really cool because I love dependency injection. Uh, you know, if you follow me anywhere on social media or with my prison project, you know, I am a big fan of dependency injection. So once I heard dependency injection, uh, for Blazor, I wanted to skip all of the other stuff, you know, all the basics to say, screw that. I want to play with the cool stuff right away. I can learn about properties and methods and all this other crap later. Uh, I want to play with dependency injection. So let's do that today. I want to see if I can get dependency injection working uh, by the end of the stream, which is like, what, 48 minutes. Okay. So normally when I play with dependency injection, I have some type of service. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to our desktop here and look at some code. It, you know what? I need I need to set some some mood music. There we go. That's much better than that awkward silence in between my uh, my breaths and my thought process, right? So what we have here is I have the counter.razor. So this was just the, the file new blazer from the project and we just started playing around in it. Uh, but now I want to convert this to like use some type of service for, for the counting, right? And uh, oh, uh, I missed the name. I missed the name. I'm so sorry. Thank you for the follow, whoever that was. I, I wasn't fast enough on my, my look reflex. Uh, and this mic like completely blocks my other screen. Uh, so thank you for the follow. Uh, as I was saying, you know, I want to I wanna bring this count stuff out into its own like little service and see if we can use dependency injection to, uh, to handle this. So uh, another approach we can take actually... Uh, Hello, is it uh, Smob UK? Is that how you say that? Smob UK? Thanks for the follow. Thanks for joining. I'm trying to learn Blazor today. And uh, so another approach we can take is I looked at this fetch data, right? Sort of like slab. Oh, smab. Okay. Smab. Slab with an M. Smab. Smab UK. Got it. I'll remember that. Thank you. Uh, so... Another approach we could take with lear learning dependency injection is there's actually this fetch data dot razor. So actually, let's let's run this right. Uh, so we'll start without debugging because it was really slow last time trying to run it as debugging. So let me just pull this over here. Let that load up. Up. Oh, hopefully this won't take too long. There we go. So yeah. So this fetch data it basically just loads a collection of some some information, right? Uh, but right now, this information 
is kind of hard coded into here. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Uh, do you want to convert this into a service or do you want to convert the counter stuff into a service? It doesn't matter to me. A service is a service. What do you want to see? Uh, we could do both. Hell, this, you want to do both? I mean, you do one, it's going to be easy to do the other. Uh, I, you know, I want to do, I want to do the counter first because we have two instances of that counter and I want to play around with how that would work. So, okay. So, uh, how would you do that here? I, I'm assuming I can just create a class right here. All right. A C sharp class. Cause this is C sharp, right? We're in blazer. I should be able to develop just like I would develop any other .NET based app like WPF or Xamarin form. So I'm going to create a class. I'll call it a uh, count service. Uh, which preview is this syntax looks like preview six rather than preview seven. So I just installed this like yesterday. No, not yesterday. Excuse me. I installed this last Tuesday. Uh, so, SMAB UK, it's possible they released Preview 7 with, within this past week, and I'm not using Preview 7. I'm using the version that we installed last Tuesday. Ah, see that, man? Things move way too fast. Way too fast. I can't even keep up. And I do a stream every week. Uh, so, we'll, we'll go with this because I'm scared to even try to upgrade this. I don't even know how I would upgrade it, honestly. Uh... But it shouldn't be too different. I'm hoping it's it's not too different. So I'm going to start by creating a uh, interface because for every service I create, I like to create an interface. Uh, I count service. Uh, we'll do that. And then obviously count service is going to derive from I count service. And let's take a look at our count real quick. So in the last stream, you'll notice that there's no uh, there's no code in this file. And that's because I figured out how to create a code behind file, right? That way, when you have a really big HTML file, it's not like just code vomit where you just can't read it anymore. So it's separated out. I'm gonna see if I can pull this out into its own like little site. Here we go, right there. All right, so now we can have these side by side. Uh, let's see, we have a current count property and we have an increment count method here. Okay, so let's go ahead and kind of follow that same thing. And we can add, oh, I don't, it's an interface. Why am I saying public? Int current count, right? We'll do that. And then we'll have a method called increment, if I can spell, increment count. Okay, uh, that looks pretty good. And then of course, we will implement the interface. And uh, we will say, you know what? I need more room, I need a bigger screen. So SMAB UK, uh, I thought you could do a partial class. Yeah, actually, so unless they changed something in preview seven, they didn't have partial class that I could find. However, I am just learning. I know nothing about Blazor. You are learning along with me. So if they have partial class, let's do it right now because th that would be so much better than what we're doing now. Because uh, what I don't like is if you look, we have this like generated underscore counter thing and yeah. Uh, the base, the class names have to be different. Like, I didn't like that. So, yeah. Let me know if we do have partial class support in Preview 7, because that would be pretty cool. Or maybe I just missed it in Preview 6, and it's possible too. Uh, so, I'm going to say uh, current count. I want my backing field here. And then for the uh, getter, I'm just going to return our uh, current count. 
because we do not want this property set directly, so it's a read-only property, if that's what you're uh, thinking to yourself. Well, why didn't you add a setter? Well, I don't want a setter because I'm going to assume that the increment count is going to, to do that. So uh, this is just current count plus plus. Okay, so we have our, uh, our interface here. Uh, well, I can't do that. Oh, because there's no, because I'm an idiot. Yeah. There we go. My bad. Now I could put a private setter on here if I wanted to, because what I'm not sure about is, so thinking out loud, like this label here, is data bound to the current count property. However, will that update if I bind to the current count, but update the backing field? I don't know if that will support uh, data binding. I don't know if that's gonna work, so we'll find out. I'll change this if I have to, but let's, let's experiment. Let's see what happens when I do this. Okay, so now, what some people do when they have a service is they might have a public property for this called a I count service. We'll call it count service, right? And then they might set it equal to a new instance of a uh, count service, right? That's You see this very common. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna actually comment this out I'm gonna comment this out because what I'm hoping I can do is come into my razor and do something like this. Is that allowed? Can I do that? Hold on, Dan. Hold on, Dan. I will get to the DI. First, I wanna test the functionality and make sure all this stuff works, okay? So I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, sh was it shift F5 for debug without, yeah, run without debugging? Control F5, okay. So let's, uh, where's it at? Oh, it's building, sorry, it's building. Got scared there. Zoltra Lord, what's up, what's up? Good to see ya. Thanks for joining again. I am uh, trying to see how services and dependency injection work in Blazor. So hopefully this is supported. If it's not, I'm gonna be really mad, honestly. This might, if this isn't supported, this might turn me off from Blazor 100% and I'll just stick to like Angular. Okay, it's loading over here. All right. So counter, yes, it works. Okay, so my service functions, perfect. So I can go ahead and get rid of this and get rid of that. We have tested the service, the service works. And I like to point out that when we incremented, we incremented the backing field. Now, if you come from WPF, or if you come from Silverlight, or if you come from Xamarin Forms, you would know that unless you called I notified property changed, that binding would not update. So this is really cool. I can set the backing field of the property, and that property will still raise some type of notification to the UI in Blazor, and it will update in the UI. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, getting rid of I notify property change is huge. I don't see why they can't do this in the next update of WPF, honestly, or Xamarin Forms. Why just just do it, just do it. Uh, so that's cool. I'm excited about that. But what I'm not excited about is uh, so I'm done with the service. So I'm going to close that. And I'm gonna come back into code. Right, right there. Come on, Visual Studio. Okay. So what I don't like, I don't like this at all. 
I do like to I don't like to manually create services. I want a dependency injection container to take care of that for me. Right? So, and we'll, I'll explain a little bit about that in a minute of why you care about DI. But for now, I want to use DI for this service. So let me open up a browser here. I'm going to do what everyone does. And I'm going to say dependency injection and blazer. How do we do this? Someone show me, please. Someone show me. Uh, docs. Okay. Close that. All right. Share single instance class. Got it. Known as a singleton. Yep. Okay. Singleton. Okay. So default. Okay. This is good to know. So in Blazor, there's some default services built in. I get, we just ask for them and we get them. You know what? That makes sense because if we go back to code and we go back to this fetch data, this right here now makes sense to me because I didn't know where this was coming from. I'm like, I don't see any registrations. I don't see anything. Where the heck is this coming from? Uh, Zutcher Lord is asking, is this the server side or the client? Side? This is a client side app. I haven't played with server side yet. I don't know the differences. Uh, maybe the same, maybe different. I don't know yet. Well, I'll find out eventually. However, this now makes sense because I didn't see any registrations for this. It's because it's built in. That's why it just worked. Oh, nope, wrong one. Alt tab to get me back here. Okay, so we have a uh, JS runtime. So it's JavaScript runtime, JavaScript. So, oh, okay, so we, we have access to the JavaScript interop. Okay, so if we want to manipulate the DOM directly or talk to the DOM, uh, we would want to use that. And we have a URI helper, contains helper workers. Another thing I like looking at this, you see that? That's an interface. I like interfaces. I don't like that's not an interface, but oh well. Uh, Rich, what's that say? Richmanian? Uh, you guys can hear background music? I hope so. It's playing. Uh... Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Don't tell me that got messed up too. I fixed that audio. I am playing background music. How about now? How about now? Background music? You got the... Okay, yeah. Tell you what, man, I updated Windows last week and it completely completely hosed all of my audio settings in OBS. So I had to like go and fix everything again. Anyways, yeah, I don't like that that's not an interface, but it is what it is. Okay, so I want to add a service. So we want to go to the startup.configure services method. Yes. Okay. Add singleton. All right. All right. Add singleton. So... Where was that? Program? No, startup. Startup. Configure services. All right. So I'm going to come into services. I'm going to say services dot add singleton of T. This is I counter service. Where's my... Uh, yep, using that. And then counter service what how come that's not working I can't do that one over hold on don't tell me two overloads okay yeah implementation oh did I misspell something? Ah, oh, because I'm an idiot. Counter server. Okay. All right. So now I have count service, right? Uh, so I, everything's spelled correctly. So I'm I'm adding my singleton. Let's go back to uh, the docs here. 
Uh, there. Okay. So we have scoped, singleton, creates a single instance of the service. Okay, transient. Okay, so request in a component, usually inject. Okay, so that's using it there. But what if I'm not... Oh, okay, yeah, so I'm in code. So I need to put the inject, so I need a, a setter, okay. Okay, so let's copy that. So it looks like, where's my service? Right here, count service. I actually have to add that. So a using statement, okay. And I need to change this to a getter setter. Okay, and that means I can get rid of my backing field now because it's not a read-only property. Okay. All right. No, 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 no. Not that. Sorry. Not that. Where I'm using the service. So I didn't need to modify that at all. What am I doing? Undo. Undo. Come on, Brian. Get it together. Get it together. I need to go here. This is where I set it, and I don't do this, right? So that's all I should have to do. Uh, Breaky. No, 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 you have to set it on the attribute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, caught myself. Thanks, uh, thanks for uh, correcting me there. Don't know what I was thinking. Okay, so theoretically, let me go back here. I should just be able to to do that, right? Ooh. Do I not need to do that? Can I just, because I prefer constructor injection. Okay, so I'm gonna do this in two different things. Uh, I'm gonna try it like this. So let's just go ahead and uh, control F5. I'm just gonna get it working. Then I'm gonna test to see if I can do constructor injection into this component base class. Or you could do it on the page. So I could do it. I could do it either on the page or I could do it in the class. Well, I was kind of confused. Okay, I'm gonna have to play with that too. Cause that's a little confusing. All right, where are we at? Okay, so here's my counter. Hey, it works. Yay, go to this page. Oh, and look, look at that. Because it's a singleton, it kept track of the value. Okay, so I just figured out how to manage state and a blazer app. Whoop, whoop. I'm sure there's other ways, but that's one way, right? Have some type of uh, singleton class that you kind of hold on to. I'm sure that's one way to do it. Uh, however, okay, I have a thought. I wanna know what happens if I open up another browser, but I'm gonna come back to that because I wanna test out if I can do constructor injection. So I wanna comment this out and let's do this. Am I allowed to do this. I'll just say CS, counter, count service. Is this supported? Let's find out. Control F5. Now SMAB is saying yes. Oh, build errors. what I do? I messed something up. Oh, because that's a, uh, Sorry about that. We'll fix that. There we go. That was my fault. I guess CS is a keyword in Blazor. What? Okay, maybe that's not what it was. 
Can I not do this? I must have just been messing that up. Okay, let's try this again. Control F5. Oh! Wait, yes, this is counter- like... Why is this not working? Why can I not... There's no argument given that corresponds to the required formal parameter count service of counter base dot counter base I count service. Hold on. Let's go back to the docs. Something is weird. Okay, yep. So prerequisites. One constructor must exist who's filled by the DI. Okay, additional parameters. It's public. Yeah, we have one constructor. That's true. That's true. Oh. DI and services. Let's see. Uh, Bricky. Oh, yes. Yes. You st so you can't do constructor injection in the component. That kind of blows, but okay. However, that is telling me. So I, I got to undo this. Hold on. I want to test something else. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of this. I want to try... Uh, you know what? Yeah, let's do that. Let's try the, uh, what was the syntax for that? It was like at, at inject, no, at inject, uh, count, count service. If I did that, is this used as a property? If I did that approach, if I said, if I added the razor directive, the type of the service to inject, property, name of the property receiving, oh, okay, then that would set the property. Like this. So if I did that, does that mean I don't need this? Let's find out. Because I'm assuming if I'm setting it in Razor, at, at the Razor syntax with that inject directive, I'm defining that uh, property name there. That's my assumption. Meaning I shouldn't have to have this count service defined in my, uh, in my C sharp, right? Or is it saying I'm going to assign a property called count service to the instance that I'm injecting? Loading. Loading very slowly. Very slowly. Maybe I maybe I have an issue. Maybe. Nope, shouldn't. I shouldn't have an issue. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Because look. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I see it. I see it. There we go. Yes, interface. Yes, thank you. Let's try this again, shall we? Now, I don't know if I would... If I'm using dependency injection, I don't think I would personally do this. Because most of my logic using that service would be in my C-sharp class... I would want to test that class. I'd want to be able to mock those things. 
Which kind of, yeah. I don't know. There, yep. Yep, that was it. Interface. And go to counter at 17 because it's a singleton. Uh, okay. So. DI and code behind is better, I think. Yes, I agree. I completely agree. I agree so much. I'm going to change this back. Man, I really wish that I could do constructor injection there. So let's get rid of that. You know what? I'm going to see if I can break this. What happens if I'm injecting into a property and I'm injecting? Well, hold on. Actually, what happens if we just have a property that's named the same thing? Let's find out. Will it crash? Will it not work? Is there a conflict? How is that resolved? Where is the building still? And then I'm curious if I try to inject both in the HTML and in the C Sharp class, if there's going to be a conflict or if it works. If there's some type of, if it resolves that conflict somehow internally. Let's see if we, if it just freezes. Okay, so, oh wait, maybe it's just, it may look like you, oh no. No, it worked. Okay. Okay, okay. So, that that's supported, right? Weirdly. Uh, setting that property, even though that property exists in my C-sharp class, uh, they might be resolving that. So now what happens if we add the inject in the C-sharp and we have the inject in the HTML? Let's see what happens here. If they have some type of... of conflict resolution that says, hey, if it's defined here, or uh, do it here first, or I don't know. I'm sure they would handle this scenario. I can't imagine that they didn't think about this situation you can get yourself into. Uh, I'm sure this, I'm sure this will work. But it's fun to find out, right? Let's try to break stuff. You know, when things load slow, it makes me worry like, uh, did it break? Did it break? Loading. Still look. Oh, oh, look, it worked. It worked. It worked. So if you set the one in the backing class, does it update the instance on the page or is it separate? That's smab. That's a good question, my friend. Uh, I think it's the same instance, honestly. For one, we registered it a singleton. Two, I'm going to assume that they have some type of conflict resolution here that does not allow you to inject two different instances of the same service if it's like named the same. I'm going to assume that. I'm not quite sure how I would test that exactly. But we'll leave it code because I like code. Uh, okay. <sighs> what? Try transient. Try okay, let's try transient. Add singleton. Add transient. So this one should give us a new instance every time. Right? So if I the one on the index page should be different than the one on the uh, other page. And every time I navigate to that, I should get a new instance, meaning no values will be saved as I navigate back and forth. Those those will be wiped out because that state is not being held in that singleton that's registered with the app. Here we go. Loading. Now, one thing I hope they fix is that how slow that is. That's pretty slow to load. So I'm going to click here. Click, 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 click. Expectation is I'm going to go to counter. It should be zero. It is because I got a new instance of that of that service because that's what a transient is. And I go back. It should be zero, which it is. Okay, so transient works. Uh, you know, I'm going to undo that because I, I had a question. I'm going to add that back to singleton. 
And I'm going to run this again. Because Singleton is going to give me the same instance every time. But this is a web app. Now this is a client side application. So if I open up multiple instances of the browser and navigate to that, uh, to this app, will each instance, each tab get different values or will it all be the same value? Let's see, Dan, uh, I believe if you add a add scope, it will let you open up two browsers, each have their own instance, but individual ones would act like a singleton. See, that's, that's the question I want to answer. Because this is a client app, so it's running on the client. But if I open another tab, that's another instance of that client, right? So should I get a new one? So let's go. Okay. Uh, nine. Copy. Let's open up another tab. Navigate to it again. What's it say? Does it say nine? It says zero. It says zero. So... In this case, I got a different instance. And I think that's because this is a client side application, right? I'm doing a client Blazor app. If this was a server app, I can almost guarantee you if that was a singleton, every person in the world who hit your website would get the same value because it's on the server. Hello from Brazil. Well, hello, uh, T. Bertuzzi. Man, that's a... It's a tongue twister. Say that five times real fast. T Bertuzzi, T Bertuzzi, T Bertuzzi. Oh, I wasn't that hard. I just said it three times. Uh, anyways, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to say, oh, hold on. Smab, even if it is server, you can't guarantee the app doesn't restart or is running from a different instance. True. So let's go back to the docs here because that's a real problem. If it's a server based app, that will be an issue. Because I don't want, if I'm on this app and you're on this app and I'm counting, I don't want your counter to increase too, right? Uh, so let's go back up. Let's go back up. So Blazor client side doesn't have a con. Ah, right here, right here. Yeah. Blazor client side doesn't currently have a concept of DI scopes. Scoped registered services behave like singleton service. However, the server side hosting model supports the scope lifetime and a razor component scope service registration is scoped to the connection. Look at that common sense DI. I love it. This makes a ton of sense. If you're on the server, you're not going to want to necessarily use singleton. If you're maintaining some type of state, you're going to want to have a scope service. That way everyone isn't using the same uh, state instances of the same values, right? Uh, like in this case, if this was server side and you were running this and I was running this, I would click this and you would see your counter going up, I'm assuming, right? Or the next time you did click it and requested this information. Uh, actually, I'm not sure how that would work. Next time we'll do a server, server app and see how that behaves. Okay. So client side, I don't have to worry about it. Perfect. Okay, so let's scroll back down. What was this about? Oh yeah, I don't care about that. Okay. Uh, if you're not familiar with DI, uh, just a, a quick cap recap of what it really is and what it means. So let's go to our, where's my service? Right here. So actually let's go to counter.razor. Now, when I first wrote this line of code, I went new count service, right? So essentially, dependency injection allows you to take the responsibility of creating objects and place it onto something else. And in fact, you've probably used dependency injection yourself. You just didn't know it. You used a manual dependency injection. So for example, let's say this count service, right? Uh, let's add a C tour to it. Uh, actually, I need another interface too. Uh, public interface, I logger, right? Okay, let's say that this took an I logger. Logger. Now, 
the responsibility of creating that logger now falls on to you, right? So you've probably done stuff like this. Now, obviously, we don't have a logger class. Uh, you know what? Let's create a logger class. What? Why not? Let's just move this down so it's all in the same spot. Uh, we'll do this. And we'll say uh, class logger implements i logger and make it public. Okay. So we have that and now we'll say new logger. Okay, perfect. So this count service has a dependency of a logger. Now in your apps, you probably pass in that manually where that is a form of inversion of control, if you will. Uh, you, are, you are the mechanism passing in the dependency of this service. So instead of doing this, we want to rely on a dependency injection container. And this container will be responsible for creating these services. It just has to know about them. And that's what we did in the startup. In the startup, on the iServices collection, we registered our services so it knows, so the DI container knows that these services exist. So whenever we ask for an iContainer service, it just gives it to us. And it gives it to us based on the rules that we set up. So for example, uh, let's say that in every single page of our app, we had this new customer service or new count service code. And then, you know, it's in production and it's been sitting out there for months and months and months. And all of a sudden you're like, man, we really need some logging. So let's go ahead and add a logger. And then you add this logger interface and then you add this dependency to the count service uh, for the logger. Well, now, you get this compile error, right? Now you'll have to go through your entire application all over the place uh, and update this code and that's code chart and it's dangerous code chart. Uh, any test you have, you name it, anything that touches this code now has to be updated to accept a logger. So you're creating new instances of loggers uh, and you don't want to create a new instance every time necessarily. You want the same logger, right? So how are you going to manage that? Oh, you're probably going to create some static class somewhere that's just floating around. It just it's not bueno, right? No bueno. So what we do is we rely on this dependency injection container, which I'm assuming that since the service can do it, I can come back into the startup and I'm going to say services. Yep. Dot add singleton. And I'll say I logger this time. Logger, right? And so I shouldn't have to really, I shouldn't have to change anything else in my code because we're using dependency injection here, right? We're not creating anything. The container's doing it for us. And anywhere it's used, I added this functionality. I added this dependency. However, it's gonna work. That's all I should have to do. If Blazor works that way, I'm assuming that this is gonna work because I just read in the docs that you're allowed to use constructor injection in your, uh, in your services. This is a service, so I'm going to test that theory now. Smab says, I know they have different solutions for storing state. Yeah, we need to, I need to figure that out too. How do you store state? Is a service the way to do it? I don't know. Do they have some type of state store built into Blazor that you can use? Possibly. So theoretically, that should just work. And it did, it just worked. Right, using dependency injection, because dependency injection is being responsible for creating our count service, I can add any dependency I want to that service, just make sure the container knows about it, <clears throat> and boom, it just works. Uh, and that's the beauty of DI, and that's why I, I love it so much. If you look at any of my apps, you will never see object equals new whatever object. You're, you're not gonna see that. Uh, cool. What else can we do with DI? Is there anything else we can do here? No, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> Smab, I'm surprised you're going through this exercise with the client template. Maybe the hosted template is more suitable to show what that uh, what is available. Well, you know, I didn't know what to choose. I've I'm brand new to this. I have I don't know the differences. I don't know when you would use one over the other. Uh, hosting models. Let's let's read up. Does it tell me when I should use one or when I should use the other? Okay, so, yep. Principle for hosting is running client side of the browser on WebAssembly. Blazor apps, dependencies, .NET runtime are downloaded to the browser. Okay, so the app could be pretty big. 
It's uh, executed directly on the browser. Then handling, same process. The app's assets are deployed as static files to a web server. Okay. Yep, that makes sense. And we have a ASP.NET Core hosted, hosted by ASP.NET Server. Okay, so here's the benefits. Here's the benefits. Uh, no .NET server side dependency. Eh, that's not a big deal, really. Right? I mean, a server is a server. It's going to have a purpose. Uh, the app is fully functioning after download to the client. Ooh. So, theoretically, you can work disconnected. Right? Theoretically. Uh, client resources and capabilities are fully leveraged. Okay. Work is offloaded from the server to the client. Got it. Uh, an ASP.NET Core web server isn't required to host the apps. Oh, so service deployment scenarios are possible. Cool. Okay, so the downside to server uh, to client side, the app is restricted to the capabilities of browsers. So yes, you're working within uh, the browser capabilities. I, I totally get that. Uh, capable client hardware and software is required. Okay. And download size is larger. Yes, I can definitely see that if you're bringing down the entire mono.net web assembly. Uh, .net runtime and tooling support is less mature. Limitations is that standard support debugging. Okay, okay. So now with server side, we are executed on the server. UI updates, event handling, JavaScript calls are handled over signal R. Now with a server, Will I have to do signal R or will it just work? I'm, a, I'm hoping the code will be the same. It just, this is just how it works, right? Anybody know this? SMAB? Uh, maybe someone could tell me, do I have to worry about signal R if I do a server side? Okay, so uh, app startup class to add server side services, the app to the uh, request handling pipeline. Smab, it just works. And also future promising. Okay, so I think it's clear to me now that we need to drop the client side and I need to start working more on the server side. So the blazer.server.js script establishes the connection and it's the app's responsibility to persist and restore app state as required. Okay, so this kind of goes back to my question of if you're on the server model, now managing state becomes a little more complicated, right? Those services will have to be scoped to the connection. Okay. Download size is significantly smaller. That's a big deal in web. Big deal. The app takes fuller advantage of server capabilities, including the uh, ASP.NET Core compatible APIs, .NET Core on the server is used to run the app, so existing .NET tooling, such as debugging, works. Ah, yes, because I am missing debugging on the client side. That, that's really annoying. Uh, I tried to do it through the, through the browser, through the F12 tools on the last stream. I couldn't even get it to work. Uh, so, okay. There are good reasons to have client project in there. I'm sure there's good reasons for it. Uh, but I'm reading this. And based on your guys' comments, I'm, I'm feeling that the client side project is more of a very specific use case that you would use. And Dan is saying, holy moly, Stack Overflow is offline. How will de developers around the world write code? <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, Stack Overflow. While I don't like to partic participate because of its toxic community, I hear they're doing good things to try to improve that. And there is a lot of good content on the site. It's just a lot of those people could be assholes. I'm sorry. I have experienced it myself and I personally have boycotted Stack Overflow uh, because of uh, my experiences on the site. So I no longer participate in Stack Overflow, but I'm sure there are you can still get a lot of value and a lot of things I search for still come up on Stack Overflow. So it's still a valuable resource. I just don't like interacting with those people. Not a very friendly environment in my opinion. Okay, so there's downsides to server-side hosting. 
Uh, higher latency usually exists. Yep, I can see that. Because everything kind of has to go through the network, right? Uh, code stencil, exactly. They are so snobbish. Yes! And it drives me crazy. Okay. You may or may not know that I am a owner slash maintainer of the Prism library. And when you are telling someone how Prism works and they are arguing to the, to the creator how it works, you have a problem. A big problem. Uh, yeah, they are very snobbish. Code stencil and rude and will make you seem stupid when you ask questions, right? Uh, like I said, it's, I hear they're doing, uh, there's some efforts that they're trying to improve that and improve their image. Uh, but I, uh, I haven't been back to look, so... And actually, I don't miss it. Actually, it just gives me more time to, to participate in streams and on my Slack channel and other uh, more personal ways to, to support uh, the users of Prism and uh, the things I talk about. So even email. All right, so where am I at? Oh yeah, there's no offline support. Okay, so yeah, if the client connection fails, the app stops working, got it. Uh, scalability is challenging for apps with many users. The service must manage multiple client connections and handle client state. Is it that every server-side web app, though? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't really see this as a downside because every web server uh, served application has to do that. Uh, Dan, laugh my ass off. That was hilarious. Yeah, that was hilarious. Uh, some people, and he's talking about. Dan was referring to. The, uh, the guy arguing with me on how Prism works, even though I'm the person who, who wrote the uh, the feature he was talking about. Uh. Anyway, so uh, an ASP.NET Core server is required to serve the app. Serverless deployment scenarios aren't possible. To me, this is not a big deal. That may be a big deal for uh, some enterprises. I'm not sure. Uh, have to handle reconnection in the serv in server-side Blazor. Have to... Oh, okay. So if someone disconnect, well, if someone disconnects from your app, do you, do they just reconnect and start where they left off, or do they uh, get a new instance of the app, like a refresh, or not a refresh, but you know, like they just reload the whole app? Uh, I don't know. I have to think about that one. I could see that. Uh, reconnection to the same server. So, yep, the server side requires an active signal R connection. Hopefully, one I don't have to manage. Yeah, so the uh, looks like here the app attempts to reconnect to the server itself, as long as the client state is still in memory. Okay, so I don't, we don't have to worry about that. Yes, that makes me feel better. Uh, however. We have, looks like we have some, uh, some ways to determine if the connection has been lost. Yep. So we have some CSS classes we can use to show a certain UI. If it's, uh, connection was lost, attempted to reconnect. Okay. So that's cool. Stateful reconnecting after pre-rendering. Okay. Now this is getting a little above my head here. Server apps are set to file the UI on the server. Okay, this might, I might need to come back to this and really grok this information because reading it quick, I'm not going to understand it. Uh, the simple stuff up here, I can just skim through and yeah, I did it. But this down here, I'm probably going to have to really read it to really understand what's going on. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, hey, I think that's, uh, I think that's good for today. I learned how easy it was to do DI and a Blazor app and... Turns out it was a uh, super easy. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to replace this with a hosted project for next week. So when you guys come back, uh, let's replace this with a hosted project uh, and then go from there. I'll, I'll, I'll get away from using this client side because it seems like I'm missing out 
uh, on some things by sticking with a client side app. So I will switch over and create a new uh, client. You know what? Screw it. I got time. I got five minutes on my stream. Let's go new project. Uh, AS yep. ASP.NET Core web app. And I'm actually going to name this one My Blazor Demo. Create. And then I will choose the server side project this time. Where? Oh, here it is. Okay. Uh, Blazor server side app. Okay. .NET Core. ASP.NET Core 3. Yep. Yep. Configure for. Uh, sure. I don't care about Docker authentication. Uh, I don't know what that is. I'll come back to that. I don't know what that is. I'll just skip that. Not server side hosted. Okay, did I create the wrong project? Hold on. Someone's telling me I messed up. I messed up. Preview 7. Okay, I'm going to upgrade to Preview 7 because apparently either I didn't have the option or I was too quick on the trigger. Uh, I'll just, I'm just going to look. What's well, Web Application 2? Uh, let's see. Blazor Server App. Yeah, see, I only have Server App. So Preview 7. I need Preview 7. That's, that's what needs to happen. I need Preview 7. Okay. I will install Preview 7 for next week, and we will start playing more with Blazor and uh, see what else we can learn. Uh, so, I think that wraps it up for the day. Uh, thank you, everyone, for the help. Uh, you guys are teaching me a lot, and I really appreciate it. This is pretty cool. Uh, Smab is telling me I'm missing some templates. You have to install those from the command line. You know, I did that. Uh... When we, when I first installed last week, I did the command line. I followed, actually, where's my, where's my docs? Right there. Uh, on getting started, I think it was. Is it getting started? They had a command. I copied, I copied and pasted this. Oh, but see that? It's been updated already. It's already been updated. Right there. So I need to go install this again, I'm assuming. And I need to run this again. And then I shouldn't have to do any of that. You can uninstall the extension at Preview 7. Installing browser. Okay. So I will do this after this. Uh, Rach Mania. Thanks. 2AM here in Japan. Oh, you're in Japan. Nihonjin desu ka? So what I said is I, uh, my Japanese is very poor. I never study. Though I did study Japan for about four years at a university. So I can speak a little bit and I go to Japan often actually. Uh, so next time I'm in Japan... We need to hook up. We need to uh, we need to get together and uh, get some steak. Tabi uh, show, right? Let's go. Uh, let's go grab some. Let's go have a meal together. Uh, Namo Sri, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Towards the end, uh, but thanks for joining anyways. All right. So I think I think we can call it a day. Thank you again very much. I will make sure I have Preview 7 installed and I will go ahead and create that uh, that server hosted Blazor project. We can start playing in that uh, next time and I won't be so limited. Uh, okay. Once again, if you guys ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And actually, let me uh, let me bring this up real quick my my notepad if you guys ever need to get a hold of me you can contact me at blagunas at infragistics.com so don't be shy feel free to email me with any questions you have or ideas or topics or if i just mess something up uh, let me know so i can uh, learn and become a better developer and a better streamer 
Uh, also, follow me on Twitter and all that good stuff, all the social media, so you know when I'm streaming and let's have conversations. All right, great guys. Hey, thank you very much for joining me. Had a blast. Uh, I will see you next week, same time, same place. Uh, all right, peace. Take it easy. Jamata.